You know, it, 2020 has been a year. Can we all agree with that? It has been a year, and I don't think it's a year any of us saw coming. I don't think it's a year that any of us ever dreamed that in our lifetime that we would live through, but yet we get to the end of 2020 and we look back and we go, we still have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? Though we didn't see things coming and though we didn't understand all that was in store, we have so much to be thankful for. And I know for many of you, you may have gone through a season this year that you didn't see coming with the loss of somebody that you love. Remember tonight, 6.30 p.m., we are gonna be doing a Surviving the Holidays virtual service, live.northstarchurch.org. It is one you don't wanna miss. I interviewed Brian Beloy, the pastor at Westridge, and Ike Riker, the pastor at Piedmont, both have walked through tragic losses about their story and how they survived the holidays. So I think it's gonna be really, really good. You know, I think about sitting in a room like this and we go, well, you know, if life went a little easier, it would be easier to be thankful. So to say I'm thankful, it means that maybe life is a little simpler. I want you to take your Bibles, if you have them this morning, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians. We're gonna read a passage together. If you've got your app out, that's great. It's probably the best way to follow along. North Star Church, Georgia. In the app store, you can download that. You can also read along on the screens. Paul is writing, the great apostle Paul who wrote so much of our New Testament. Paul is writing to us and he's talking about his story. And we know that Paul is a guy that we all know his name, but I don't think we always know what Paul went through. Listen to what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman. I have served him far more. I have worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. I've traveled on many long journeys. I faced danger from rivers and robbers. I've danger from my own people, the Jews as well as the Gentiles. I faced danger in the cities and the deserts and on the seas. And I faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long and enduring many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty and have gone without food. I've shivered in the cold without out of clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. And you go, my year ain't been that bad, all right? And that's sort of how you think about it when you hear like Paul. And then it's hard to remember later on in Thessalonians, he said, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So the question is, how do we live through the tough times of life and the storms, the adversity, the struggle, the problems, the stuff that in a normal year life may come at us with and then we get an abnormal year that we li have lived through and we go, how in the world do I remain thankful during this time? So I get together with a group of pastors and that pastor a lot of churches around this area. And the last time we were all together back in the spring, we got together in my backyard actually and we circled up all socially distanced and we said, when summer hits, it'll burn the virus out of the air. That's why we're pastors, not in the medicine, all right? And so we've learned, here we are in, uh, in November, we were together last week, and we've learned, hey, we're still in the thick of it. How do you remain thankful? How do you remain thankful when times aren't good? Well, rather than you just hearing me sit up here and, and wax eloquent this morning, I've got a good friend that I have known a really long time that's walked through a journey he wouldn't have chosen to get him here today. So I want y'all to give a good North Star welcome to one of our own here at North Star, Mr. Jeffrey Melvin. Y'all give Jeffrey a round of applause, would you? What's up, Thanks. baby? Thanks, how are you? Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. So Jeffrey, you and I have known each other for a minute or two, hadn't we? Just a minute. Just like, a minute. Like, so when, how old were you when, when you started in my youth group? I was 12, uh, about to turn 13. All right, and tell us about your family now. So my wife, Cody, and I have been married uh, 16 years, and we have uh, three kids. Journey's 13, Riley's 13, and Rowan's 12. 
So we, uh, it's craziness. <laughs> um, but my wife, Cody, and I both graduated from North Cobb High School. Um, I went to Big Shanty Elementary and Baker Elementary. So we are um, pretty ingrained in Kennesaw and Ackworth. It's through and through. So your youngest now is the age that you were when you and I met. Yes. So I was 14. So I was 14 sure. when Jeffrey was 12. Sure. We'll, it worked we'll, out. We'll go really, with that. Really, yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Um, it's been neat to watch you. You know, I've gotten a, I've gotten a front row seat because I got to see you as a high school student mm -hmm. and go on off to college and follow you in your years in ministry. And 2019 delivered something that you didn't see coming. You ended up moving from Texas back to Kennesaw. Tell us a little bit about that story of what 2019 was like. Yeah, we had, uh, Cody and I had, um, the opportunity to move to Austin, Texas uh, for our job and career. And it had been 15 years in the making. It was um, the goals that we had set for my, uh, my career of who I wanted to be. I'd spent 15 years in leadership development and goal planning and training um, to get to this moment. And we got to Austin, Texas and had everything that we had worked for, everything that we had wanted and ended up having nothing. And so um, we ended up coming back home and went from having everything and dream job and career and status to living in my in-law's guest bedroom with my three kids and the dog a month later. And um, 2019 was hard, Mike. 2019 was a year of um, just watching everything that we had worked for and built for um, fall apart. What did you learn about you in that process? What did you learn about Jeffrey, who's been pastoring, ministering mm -hmm. to other people all these years, yep. and now you're finding yourself in that bedroom mm -hmm. in a house that you most, I mean, they're being great, very gracious having oh, you in, but gosh. you don't want to be there. You want to visit, but you don't want to live there, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I'd learned, and I was the children's pastor. I was, this is what I did um, for years, and I realized and learned that um, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Mm. I'm not as tough. I'm not as put together, and that's okay. Mm. That's okay, and... I am so thankful that my in-laws, um, I, gosh, it gets me every time. I hope that when my kids are adults and they're in their late 30s, early 40s, and their life is falling apart, um, and they pick up the phone and say, hey, we got to come home, and we swing the front door open, because that's what they did. They didn't ask any questions. Um, they didn't care. They said, come on in. Let's go. We got this. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for that because I don't know where we would have been. I don't know where we would have ended up. And I found myself in a position uh, learning about myself. I could not talk my way into a job. I couldn't charm my way into a job. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. And I ended up, I took a, a part-time overnight stock position at a clothing store, folding clothes. And I remember standing out in front of the store. It was raining and 4.30 in the morning, waiting for the manager to get there to open the door. And it just hit me of three months ago and I had everything. And here I am outside a clothing store to fold clothes. And God reminded me, um, I don't have you there, Jeffrey, to fold clothes. I have you there to learn something. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the best place for you to be right now. And it was not a fun lesson. <laughs> it was not an easy lesson, but it was good. And I learned about, um, I learned a lot about who God created me to be mm. and who I am in him, um, not what I created myself. You know, when we talked about it, I know just through this process, Identity was a big word for you during that process as well. Yeah. What'd you learn about what had happened through those years with your identity? I went from being somebody, what I felt like was somebody, um, to basically feeling like nobody. 
And I, I know I wasn't nobody because I know what God says about me, but I felt like nobody. Mm. And um, that was hard. Uh, my identity and my career and um, being noto- known and successful was everything for me. My family, that was who we were. We were the Melvins and we were children of family pastors and our life revolved around who I had become. And all of a sudden I was nobody. I was nobody. We were walking through the front door of the church and sitting on the second row and it was the, the best thing for us. Um, but it, it, it's a very tough pill to swallow mm. when nobody knows who you are and nobody knows um, what you've accomplished in life. You had a great teammate oh, man. through that. And Cody yeah. was thick, right? I mean, this wasn't something that y'all ended back up here because y'all went different ways. You no. ended up back here by, by just, you just ended it, up back here. We ended just, up back, yeah. yeah. Well, but Cody was huge to you during that time, wasn't she? Oh my gosh, Mike, she's phenomenal. Um, God, God knew what he was doing. He knew what I needed um, 16 years ago. We actually met in elementary school at Baker <laughs> Elementary School. Um, so I tell my, you with kids in elementary school, tell don't my worry, now, that's not normal. <laughs> but I right? tell my kids now, like, you never know who you're <laughs> sitting next to in class. Um, but uh, Mike, she's phenomenal. And God knew exactly what I needed and more than that, he needed, knew I, who I needed mm. um, and who I was gonna need. Um, she's legit. She couldn't be here today. In fact, she's back in Austin she's working working. today, but she shot a video for us. Listen to part of Cody's story. Good morning, my name is Cody Melvin and unfortunately I'm not able to join my husband Jeffrey and Pastor Mike on stage this morning because I'm out of town for work, but I love the gratitude service at North Star so much and I just hate that I'm missing it. So thanks for letting me be there virtually. Um, After the year that we had in 2019, we felt like the walls were caving in and there was just no end to the hurt. Um, It felt like every step and every turn we took, it was just met with heartache and confusion. But I never doubted that God was there. I knew that he was with me. I never thought, like, where is he? He left me. Um, But I just, I couldn't see that light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't see a way out. And it was really hard to be grateful during that time for his silence. Um, He knew we needed the silence. I I just had this big disconnect between what I knew to be true about Jesus and what I believed about him and what I was actually feeling. Some days we didn't even have a clue what to do or where to start. So we just did the next right thing. Um, We would go to church every Sunday and we would pour our hearts out in worship to God, knowing that he would move, um, but we were just straining to hear his voice. I kept that song, Do It Again. It's one of my favorites. Um, I kept it on repeat. And those lyrics about, uh, you moved the mountains and I will see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. It hit me so hard, like a ton of bricks every time. Um, You know, just because he would make a way. Um, You know, the silence, I just decided to be grateful for it because the silence is what drew me closer to him. Um, I needed him. And so I, I just drew closer. And the silence actually began to fade in early 2020. And God's purpose and plan started to become clear. But the reason I can say that I'm thankful for the silence is because that's exactly what God used to draw us closer, closer to God and closer to each other um, than we've ever been. Everyone knows hindsight is 2020. And, you know, we definitely can look back and see God's purposes in all those times. But the cool thing is that God doesn't need hindsight. He sees the full picture in its entirety, even when we can't. We just get like a tiny little glimpse. He sees the whole thing. And, you know, he had this plan that brought us back to Kennesaw, which is our hometown and near our family. And he has blessed us beyond belief, more than we could have imagined, even in this wacky year of 2020. For anyone who is struggling to be thankful or having a hard time finding God in the mess, 
Just know he has not left you. He's walking beside you even in the silence. It's for a purpose. Just believe it and trust it. And it's okay to pour out all of your emotions on him. That's He's there to, with open arms. Just don't give up. Do the next right thing until the silence begins to fade. I'm also thankful for North Star and their technology that has allowed me to be here this morning. So happy Thanksgiving, and I can't wait to be back in person. Would y'all thank Cody? Wasn't that so good? Um, the, watching that and hearing it, um, it, she is that through and through, Mike. I mean, that's, that is who she is, and that's Cody. And when I felt like I was at my lowest point, um, I would come home, and that's who God gave me. And that actually, at times, made it harder for me because I was supposed to be um, the spiritual leader and take care of my family and take care of her, and I, I couldn't do it. I, I, I had no way, and I remember sitting at the kitchen table with her. We finally had like a little moment of peace, and she said, let me pray for you. And she prayed for us and prayed over us and said, we're going to do this together. Let's go. Just, and we're just going to do what Mike Lynch tells us to do. Just, we're going to join every small group we can. We're going to not miss a Sunday. We're going to show up and sit on that second row. And um, she, God used her to get us to where we needed to be. And it wasn't anything that I could do myself. And I am so thankful, so thankful for her. I'm so thankful for North Star. I'm thankful that I've, I can say it now that I'm on this side, I'm thankful that um, we lost everything that I thought was important mm. because we're in a good place. We're in a good place right now. And our priorities have changed. If I had talk to you in 2018 and you'd have just been coming through town for Thanksgiving and visiting mm -hmm. family, heading back for a crazy Christmas season at your church. And I said, Jeffrey, tell me what thankfulness means to you. What does gratitude mean to you? What, oh. you, what do you think you'd have said? I'd have said, I'm thankful for my job. <laughs> I'm thankful for the success I've had. I'm thankful that I'm known in the community, I'm thankful that I get to have a front row seat in the lives of other people's life. Mm. I'm thankful that I get to um, be a part of, of changing other people's lives. And now, <laughs> I'm thankful that I have a front row seat in the life of my kids. I'm thankful that I have a front row seat um, in the life of my family and North Star Church um, because you've seen um, within a month's time everything that I was thankful for and grateful for is gone. And you find yourself in a guest bedroom at 40 years old with three kids and a dog. <laughs> um, but I'm thankful to be on the front row with my family. Mm. I'm thankful for it. You, you know, it's so interesting. <laughs> I've seen Jeffrey literally, you know, those kids, when they're in your youth group, this is crazy, I was a youth pastor, 91, 96, those kids are always kids in your brain. <laughs> they are, I and mean, they're always, I was on Facebook the other night with a young lady that was in our high school ministry. She's going through something and she's like, you didn't need to check with me. And I said, you're one of my students. That's how I feel about you. You're one of my kids. I've seen Jeffrey at his highs and I've seen Jeffrey at his lows. And I've seen Jeffrey back at his highs. He walks into this situation. He really didn't choose to walk in. It would have been easy when things aren't good to be bitter. Would y'all all agree with that? Very easy. I mean, bitterness is... It's on, the, it's on the low shelf. Uh -huh. You can grab that one yeah, quick. It's easy. It's right there. Every Saturday, from the minute this guy showed back up and began attending North Star, every Saturday, Ann and I get a text from him. I'm praying for you tomorrow. 
We're so excited to be at North Star every Saturday. That when he was at his lowest, he was encouraging me. You know one of the greatest ways to find gratitude? Do it. Will yourself to do it. I didn't notice if he sent me the same thing. You could have cut and pasted them. I don't even know. I'm words of affirmation. I took them all. I'm like, God, Jeffrey's so nice. He could have sent me the same thing every week. But you will yourself to it. And here's the thing. That season, this too shall pass. We have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. And, and I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for North Star and... Um, Last year, I would have, or the year, two years ago, I would have been thankful for what I had. Um, but now I'm grateful for who I have. Mm, mm. And I'm thankful for um, the few people that God has put in my life through North Star Church that completely changed the trajectory and the course of where I was leading my family and where I was headed. Um, so thank you. Mm. Thank you for you being you and creating um, an environment where we can, f God uses people to change other people's life. Well, it's an honor, and I tell you what, I'm proud of you. Would y'all let Jeffrey know how thankful you are for him sharing his story today? Would you pray with me? Father, today we, uh, it's so easy when times are good to have that list, man, that list of I'm thankful for this and I'm thankful for this and I'm thankful for this. But Father, I recognize there are seasons that we walk through, that list gets shortened because of what we've lost, what we've experienced, what we've gone through. Father, all of us are looking for your will for our lives. Paul nailed it. Be thankful in all seasons for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Father, we can be thankful in all seasons because you aren't going anywhere. And sometimes you take our worst and turn it into our best if we'll just keep walking. So Father, today, thank you for a time to hit pause and be reminded of what we do have, and what we do have to be thankful for. Father, today, thank you that you haven't gone anywhere. You stand the test of time. Father, you've always got us in the palm of your hand. Jesus, couldn't do it without you. We sure love you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.